Vince with Tormach. Today I'm going to show you how to square up a block of hardened S7 on a surface grade. This block's hardened to approximately 57 rock bar. What we're going to do is we're going to grind the sides, the faces parallel on the surface grinder. And then what we'll do is we'll put it in a tooling vise, indicate in an edge, and then grind the edges uh, square to the faces. I just like to hit that with my stone to knock off any high spots, any scale, anything like that. You see when I wipe off the magnet, I always use my hand and then wipe my hand off. Uh, you don't want to use a rag, because what happens if you use a rag, you'll be wiping it off and it'll get sucked up in the wheel. Okay? So always just use your hand on the grinder. Now I set the travel limits for the X here. We'll go through we'll, we'll go through all of them, but we'll start with just this step over here. And what this is going to do is going to travel in X. When it hits the end of the travel, then it's going to step over in Y and then go back in X, and it's just going to step like that. It's only going to step over on one end. And the last one is the constant traverse. As it's feeding in X, it's also going to be feeding in Y. So it'd be, it's just like the picture, it's a zigzag across. And there's no step over, it's just constant feeds back. Oops, I'm up. When the light is lit, you can't start the, the feed. That means I'm on approximate. So now that I'm, the lights are off, now I can start it. We'll clamp it in the tool vise um, and square up two edges to those faces. Check out the indicator, make sure it's. Yeah, that looks good. Okay. We'll grind this edge first, then we'll tip it up. We'll grind this, and then we know that these two sides would be square to each other as well as being square to the faces. Why do you do an angle? Why I do an angle, I don't want to to have it to square with the machine just because then you've got all the force is trying to push the, the part out of the vise. Um, and I don't want it to be exactly perpendicular to the machine because then it just takes longer to grind. So I kind of split the difference, go about 45. You got the, the wheel force pushing against the, the back of the um, vise, so it shouldn't slip on you. But you still got a little bit of an angle so you don't have to travel as far and wide to clear the whole part. Okay, to touch the wheel off, I'm going to switch into plunge grind so I get the table moved back and forth. While I bring the wheel down. Thank you. 
Okay, we just sparked with the wheel, so I'm going to stop the travel. See how this light lights up when I bring the table out? I'm just going to jog it off so that's off. And then we'll use the constant travel. Got the block squared up to both faces, and two of the sides are squared up to those faces. Okay. What I could do is either flip the block like this in the vise, and just repeat what I just did, or you can use one, two, three blocks. Put the side you ground square on the vise down against the magnet and then support it with one, two, three blocks to keep it from tipping over. Okay. Like that or uh, at the end you can do the same way because you know these are sides are square to everything mm -hmm. so you can just hold it on the magnet and finish your grinding for size. You wouldn't need one on the other end? Uh, typically you don't but you could also you could butt it up against one. You could grab another one, two, three block. It kind of depends on how big your part is. Okay, because it parts don't usually lift up, they'll slide. Um, but if it's got enough that the magnet will get a grip, good grip on it, you don't really need one on the end. It won't hurt anything. Um, but I usually just block up parts that are tall and clamp them like that. Cool. All right, that's how you square up a block on the grinder.